hello everyone and welcome to a new topic discussion which is a speed of groundwater movement under this uh, groundwater engineering course in earlier discussions also several times uh, this discussion has come indirectly that the speed of groundwater movement is uh, in subsurface condition or in natural conditions is quite slow but even this uh, uh, slow movement of groundwater especially in the areas where pollution is uh, there and it is being dumped on surface can pollute our uh, aquifers quite significantly and it can harm. So, because uh, uh, the groundwater movement may be slow, but uh, still these can harm our aquifers. So, that kind of discussion today we are going to have. So, we know that uh, it is uh, from pollution point of view, the movement of groundwater or speed of movement of groundwater is very important. And nowadays uh, we know that there are a lot of effluents are being put uh, either on surface or in the rivers. And if a river itself is effluent, uh, then it can cause harm to our aquifers, especially about the quality of water. So that discussion we are going to have in this uh, lecture. So, we know that uh, in these pollutants may be very harmful substances, sometimes they are deliberately injected into aquifer or accidentally injected into aquifer and that becomes a, a great concern or urgency in many cases when these are detected that they certain effluent or, a, uh, or a substance harmful substance is being injected into the aquifer to determine that uh, when the harmful substance will reach the well from where the waters is being withdrawn. And it, in this country we many times we read or uh, hear in news channels that uh, certain villages are uh, which are close to some uh, industrial areas are having highly polluted water. So, when we know these pollutions can be of two types, uh, one is the point source and another one is non point source. So, here we are talking about point source pollution which may harm our aquifers. Non point source pollution just briefly I will mention there where you do not know exactly what is the location from where these harmful substances are being added into our aquifer. So, those are called a non point source. An example is arsenic uh, uh, concentrations in many parts of West Bengal even uh, part, some parts of eastern UP. Bihar where this is causing a big problem, but the source is non point. So, to pinpoint from where this substance is being added into aquifer is very hard to determine. But in case of point source pollution, it is possible to find out what is the source from where these harmful substances are being uh, discharged or injected into aquifer. For such things, the important thing is to know the speed of ground water movement. And uh, if uh, this can be done, then it is fine. But generally, many times it is overestimated that the speed is very high. But we know that in, you know, especially in hard rock terrains, where openings are very little, pore spaces are not there, only fissures or fractures are there, their speed of groundwater movement, even if it is carrying harmful substance, can be very low. So, this uh, will result from the, because of overestimations. Uh, people tend to think of groundwater in terms of surface water. This is the tendency. They feel that uh, in subsurface condition, the groundwater also moves at the same speed as surface water, but it is not true at all. And they, that basically uh, lead to the overestimation by many people. So, now we will consider a, a situation where we know that pollu pollutant source and uh, see that uh, what uh, how the Darcy law can be applied and how we can estimate uh, this speed of movement of groundwater from a point source pollution to our aquifer or especially to the well from where the pumping is being done. So, here what we can see that there is an industrial area and uh, then you are having a you know pollutant spill uh, from factory or uh, from where that industrial area. Here we can also see that the water table uh, is here and uh, the water uh, because in downstream or uh, lower elevations the water is being withdrawn. So, this is creating our hydraulic gradient here by 15 meter. 
uh, that we will consider while bringing these values into Darcila. And uh, this, uh, the bore well is used for drinking water supply. And this distance in this our uh, schematic is 5000, that is uh, 5 kilometer. So that uh, now what we have to estimate is that uh, if the transmissivity of an aquifer and the hydraulic gradient which I, just I have mentioned here that in 5 kilometer the fall uh, in uh, uh, this uh, groundwater table is by 15 meter. So if this hydraulic gradient are known then we can apply the Darcila and calculate how much uh, water is flowing through the aquifer and we would know we can estimate and that how much water is being flowed. But in this schematic or in this example, I am not showing any variations within the aquifer. But in natural conditions, there might be lot of variations. If it is sedimentary rock, there might be variations in grain size or different layers having different grain sizes, different material. Anyway, so for time being, we assume that this is isotropic, isotropic homogeneous aquifer conditions are there. So, because for understanding uh, such kind of movement which is uh, polluting, uh, carrying uh, harmful substances, we start with a simple scenario. In simple scenario here is that our aquifer in this case is homogeneous and isotropic. So, from pollution study point of view, it may not be important for the volume rate of flow, how much water is being flown, but uh, the more important here is the speed of water molecules or water or substances which are getting dissolved in water and being carried up to the well which is being the water of from that well is being used for drinking water. Further it is important that potentially harmful substances which are entered in groundwater and are traveling towards the borehole that is the most concern here. So now we, we would like to estimate that how long it will take the pollutants or these harmful substances to reach to the bore well having in this example having a distance of 5 kilometer. So uh, further is uh, we have to also keep in mind whether flow uh, in, in this area or in this aquifer is laminar or turbulent or how much it is getting influenced because of pumping of water near the well, whether the flow remains laminar or turbulent and what happens to the Reynolds number accordingly. So the apparent velocity that we can write here is the apparent velocity as QA uh, which was also discussed earlier. Anyway, so apparent velocity and the symbol is a small Q here can also be called as a specific discharge and uh, now we can write the Darcila. So that uh, we write that Q small Q equal to K and I, K multiplied by I. And here the I is our hydraulic gradient and K is of course hydraulic conductivity. So likewise we can write. Now if we take little different scenario for the same flow rate that occurs through a smaller cross sectional area like here the things are being displayed in the lower part where everywhere the flow is not through smooth channels like in the section A. So this cross sectional area will also vary and therefore at different locations the, uh, the uh, flow speed um, will increase or decrease accordingly. So uh, depending on the openings or the cross sectional area. So if the flow speed through cross sectional area A like uh, here the example is given area A, A1 then the Q and is Q when the total area is A1 the available for flow then flow is speed through the reduced area that is the A2. So A1 and then you are having A2 here. Here uh, the scenario is that the uh, opening or the cross sectional area has reduced and that it becomes our A2. So we will have a we will have this uh, flow speed V where we can write like uh, Q is small Q A1 e equal to V A2 equal to Q over this uh, Q total discharge. So a, this is basically a simple example of ratio of A2 oblique A1 in the same way as the ratio of volume of pores uh, to the total volume and that means what we are talking indirectly or directly is the porosity. So now we can write the equation that V equal to Q upon A2 the same we can also write Q upon N A1 
and uh, then we can write equal to q a small q upon n because q upon a we have already uh, discussed that part. So, that we can substitute. So, it becomes v becomes basically q upon n and in, in real aquifer conditions the it is generally that pores are not uh, and neat or cylindrical tubes like in example A. These might be like this and this is most likely scenario. So, uh, then uh, these uh, uh, you know pore uh, or the opening space the cross sectional area is varying with distance and then things become little complicated. So, further that means uh, what uh, overestimations of uh, speed of movement of groundwater which was being discussed earlier is coming now that uh, a b we cannot think all the time the scenario a that whatever the openings are available even in a2 they will be very smooth opening it is not like that most likely scenario is like uh, shown here in say, uh, figure b where at places you are having good openings at places you do not have openings it between the uh, spaces uh, pore spaces wherever the openings are there. So, not all pores will have will be used as a flow path some of them will be kind of dead end there is no uh, further flow is possible. So, that means the speed will or the movement of uh, ground water will reduce further. So, finally, the water will not make use of full width of pore channels and there will be an immobile layer the boundary layer or around the grains which is also shown here the dead pores are there and uh, moving this is this part is moving, but there may be some parts where things will not move. Because of this uh, uh, not uh, openings are not consistent throughout the aquifer then this variable size of openings that means that uh, uh, that uh, flow will become mean uh, flow speed and this the effect of uh, uh, this non contributory pores. Uh, which are going for towards the dead end layer is that the figure for porosity that we need to use in our calculation of flow speed is smaller than that obtained by using this uh, equation. So, uh, still we are uh, reducing in real situations in little complicated situations we are further re reducing the flow of speed. So, now this uh, the uh, this flow speed can be obtained which is n equal to bp upon bb and n is of course, porosity which we have been using this and some literature you may see the they are using new, but the same thing. Then bp is the volume of voids uh, within our aquifer or within our rocks b and vv uh, is the bulk volume of the rock and this uh, ratio gives us the porosity. So, now the uh, result of this that our equation of for the speed of groundwater movement uh, will become like this that the v i where v i is the average speed of groundwater movement uh, which would be equal to a small q upon n d and n d is the kinematic or dynamic porosity which is changing with distance that we can write also like k i that is hydraulic conductivity multiplied by hydraulic gradient divided by n d. So, n d is the reasonably groundwater movement which is very close to the specific yield and the specific yield of different formation geologic formation different rocks varies. So, uh, like uh, for example, specific yield of some sedimentary rocks may be very high so, specific yield of some igneous rocks metamorphic rocks may be very low. So, in this uh, example which we are seeing here as in figure uh, we see that the water table uh, falls by uh, 15 meters roughly here and uh, this 15 meter is shown in the distance of 500 meter that is uh, 5 kilometer. So, hydraulic gradient here uh, that uh, that is means i we can write 15 upon 5000 or it becomes 0 0.003. So, this uh, this is ratio. So, of course, there will not be any units or uh, there. So, this ratio would be 0 0.003. Uh, so, that uh, the aquifer is if we as we have discussed earlier that aquifer we are considering here as homogeneous and the example here we are taking of sandstone. So, with the hydraulic conductivity of 5 meter per day and dynamic porosity of uh, 0 0.1 
5 or 15 percent. If we consider this and uh, the equation just discussed earlier that uh, Vi which we can write Q upon Nd equal to Ki upon Nd. So, by substituting values here in this equation what the uh, Vi value which we get is the 0 0.1 meter per day. 0 0.1 meter means 10 centimeter per day. So, that means the movement of uh, uh, pollutants or uh, harmful substances through even a sandstone uh, aquifer uh, is going to be very slow. So, the overestimations which we have discussed in the beginning of this discussion is that is that is what if first we assume normally people assume that as surface water is flowing the ground water will also flow at the same speed it is not like. So, this is speed is quite slow quite slow, but in this is the sandstone scenario and uh, considering homogeneous, but if we consider some igneous or metamorphic rocks where openings of fissures are less, then this speed is going to be further low. So, the, uh, this that means that uh, uh, in order to reach to the well for this hypothetical situation of 5 kilometer distance from the pollution source, uh, then it will take about uh, 50,000 days or 135 uh, years to reach the water molecules uh, presumably for the pollutant to travel from beneath the industrial area site to the bore well. So, that kind of movement we are uh, we are handling in uh, you know. So, that is why you know in earlier discussions also that if over pumping is done this drawdown or this cone of depression becomes very deep and therefore, uh, the since the movement of groundwater in subsurface condition is very slow and this drawdown becomes sharper and sharper, deeper and deeper, this cone of depression. So, that is why it is recommended uh, that uh, this drawdown should not be continuous uh, or the withdrawal of water should not be continuous and they you know as far as possible the shallow cone of depression should be maintained. Further, if a, a lot of water is being pumped out from here, then there might be changes or a, a because of hydraulic gradient which might increase. Here we are considering water level here, but by a drawdown if water level reaches to this part, then the hydraulic gradient is going to be uh, more than uh, uh, you know 40 or 50 meters. And then when hydraulic gradient is high, then speed will also be higher. So, when it, that is why it is said that this cone of depression should be maintained as optimum or as shallow as possible. So, here uh, several points which we have discussed are worth noting here that the calculation did not take in this in the example which we have taken did not take account of the fact that the pumping from bore well would increase the hydraulic grain just with, with the point which I have just mentioned that once you start pumping and a, a cone of depression becomes deeper, the hydraulic gradient will increase and the, of course, the speed of movement of water and of course, pollutant. So, the assumption that pollutant moved at the same speed as the water on the surface is not valid and this effect uh, such as the uh, diffusion and absorptions may mean that pollutant travels more slowly. Because when pollutants if they the size is more and even if it is not then the through which the rocks or openings it is traveling there will be absorptions and diffusion and uh, you know dissolution also and this will create a further reduction in the speed of movement of groundwater. So, that is why in beginning we said that uh, generally uh, you know this is overestimated the speed of groundwater is overestimated. So, the larger the dynamic porosity the slower the speed of movement and vice versa. So, this is also very important to uh, remember this thing while estimating the speed of movement of groundwater. So, now the last point which we have just mentioned about this the larger the dynamic porosity the slower the speed of movement and vice versa. This point becomes very significant when dealing with a, a fissured aquifers, fissures aquifers uh, where you are having not openings or pore spaces like in sedimentary rocks. I gave examples of igneous or metamorphic rocks. So, that suppose that aquifer is a limestone. Now, it is a completely different scenario and uh, that means that the all the permeability and dynamic porosity is contributed by horizontal figures. 
fissures and that will create different kind of uh, movement of water, ground water movement than earlier. So, that, that scenario we will also discuss briefly. So, that average permeability in such case will be still 5 meter per day, but the dynamic porosity is only 0 0.001 or 0.1 percent. And uh, if we insert these values to the equation which we have discussed earlier that is uh, V i equal to and then we substitute these values. And uh, so, this uh, uh, the permeability 5 meter per day and 0 0.03 here and value 0 0.001 is also so 15 meter per day. So, relatively as compared to earlier example where it was uh, 1070 meter per day, it is now coming uh, uh, 15 meter per day which is uh, quite high. So, the water would, uh, would move from factory to boreholes in less than one year and there in the previous example, it would have taken 135 years to move water. So, what is important here to understand that the geologic formations, the surf surface rocks and formations, fissures, fractures, joints, openings, they play very, very important role in the movement of groundwater. They, they are the main controllers of the movement of groundwater. So, once the rock type is changed, everything has changed. From 135 years, now we are talking about uh, just one year. So, this is very important point here. So, the difference in travel times uh, may not be seem uh, significant in the, even in such cases. So, if the pollutants is going to reach the borehole eventually in a one year of course, it is eventually it is going to. So, it poses a threat to water supply from that borehole. So, and that matters whether it arrives quickly or after a long time. Now, if some measures are taken like if effluent are reduced or some lining is done in that uh, dump yard where the these pollutants are being dumped, then this uh, the mixing of pollutants with groundwater uh, can be reduced and that may take longer time to reach to the bore well. So, this uh, answer basically depends on some extent to the nature of pollutants, what kind of uh, these harmful substances are being injected or dumped uh, openly and some pollutants may degrade or decompose into harmful byproducts and if they remain in the aquifer for long enough. So, that is another problem which these pollutants can create to our aquifers in even in subsurface conditions. And similarly, few harmful microorganisms uh, might survive in an aquifer for periods more than a year. So, they can also bring some diseases who takes the water from such wells which are close to such industrial area. So, these are very important aspect here and uh, one can also argue in other way that the long travel time may mean that pollutant is in aquifer and undetected for many years, perhaps appearing unexpectedly at bore well long after premises that cause the pollutants have to cease to operate. So, there might be a counter argument that if a speed is so slow, then we do not have to bother. But in, in many cases, it is not true because the speed uh, as per the you know if I, as we have discussed that if hydraulic gradient increases, the speed will increase. So, if more water is being withdrawn because of more requirements for irrigation or drinking more population increase, that means that uh, the speed initially it was estimated for the groundwater flow uh, has already increased because of hydraulic gradient. So, calculation of uh, this type should be done on regular basis based on the hydraulic gradient or levels in the water uh, from where the water is being withdrawn. So, that means that uh, calculations should also be done to protect uh, uh, you know to protect these boreholes from such uh, uh, pollutants. So, a protection zone can be uh, drawn uh, so that uh, in even in 135 years they do not pollute our wells. And uh, within these zones, these means protected zones, activities of um, uh, these pollutant groundwater can be restricted and that is why protected zones are required. So, that the, uh, the humans or animals whoever is taking water from these bore wells are safe and healthy. With this I end this discussion. Thank you very much.